This week we continued in our study of Genesis and we covered Genesis chapter 11. So if you haven't heard this message, I want to encourage you to go to our website and you can download that message or listen to it online. You'll get all the details of Genesis chapter 11 that we covered. It's in this chapter that God pronounces a judgment on mankind by dispersing them as they were gathered together in one place. They had one common language and he caused a confusion among them. He he confused their languages and so causing them to scatter. So what was it that God was displeased about? Why would he take this action against mankind? And how does this fit into the overall narrative in Genesis? Well, the text gives us several clues as to why God might have been displeased with people and what they were doing. Uh, Three of which is that they were building a city, they were building a tower, and the text says that they were trying to make themselves a great name uh, so they wouldn't be scattered over the whole earth. Now, building a city and uh, making a name for yourself isn't necessarily a bad thing. We know that God uh, commanded Israel to build Jerusalem, the city of God, and that making a name for oneself that would last uh, after their life here on earth, you know, investing in the next generation, leaving a legacy, these are things often considered a very positive thing. So why would God be displeased? Well, the the clue, I think, is found in that third component in that they were building a tower. This building of a tower really colors why they were building a city and what kind of name they were trying to make for themselves. This tower, the text says, was built out of uh, kiln bricks uh, with mortar that uh, that used tar for mortar. This was a very typical building style uh, with also the description that the top would reach to heaven This would be the typical building style of what's called a ziggurat. And a ziggurat in the ancient Near East had a very specific purpose. It was a dwelling place. It was meant to be a dwelling place for a local deity. The top would reach up to heaven and often they'd put a a small room at the very top of the ziggurat that that would put, they'd put a bed, a table, where they could uh, ascend these stairs and put food in this room to please a god, to feed a god, to meet that God's needs. And the whole point of doing this was not necessarily worship, it was manipulation. If you could please that God by meeting that God's needs, you could then uh, have that God descend those same stairs that you built and dwell among you and bless you and make sure that things went well for you. And so when they were building a city and making a name for themselves, it was all for the purpose of being autonomous that they wouldn't be scattered around the earth, that they could manipulate God to reform him or recast him in their own image, their own will. And they could uh, do certain things to manipulate God's plan rather than simply trusting God. See, this is what God has wanted from man from the beginning, that man would trust him, that God is good, that God desires to have relationship with man. And here we see man's error in deciding that we want to design our own purpose, design our own destiny, and we want to control God. You can see why this might displease God who has a great plan for all of mankind if man would only trust him. You know, I think about this and I wonder how I do this in my everyday life when I worry about my life's circumstances, when I see things and and, and circumstances befall me that are beyond my ability to control the outcome, that I I desire to uh, come up with fixes and solutions uh, apart from simply trusting God to work out the details. Now, God wants us to be proactive in our lives, obviously making free will decisions that are in alignment with his good purposes for us. But we only do those in light of God's overall sovereign plan for the entire world. We trust him. So when things happen in our life that we wouldn't necessarily choose for ourselves, sometimes it's simply God saying, trust me. Trust me. I'm in control. I love you. And I have good planned for you. Even though this time in your life may be painful, trust that I am doing something greater, either in the people around you or in your own heart. It's at this time we are really 
tempted to do the same thing this people group did in Genesis 11. We want to uh, do more good works or give more money or pray more or read the Bible more uh, simply to manipulate God's favor for blessing in our life. In reality, all of those things are, are really what God desires for us just to be in good relation with Him, to increase our knowledge of who He is, that we might more fully trust Him every step of the way for our lives. We don't design our worship services and our church services to manipulate the blessings of God. We design them to learn about who God is and how we can direct our worship to Him. This upcoming Sunday, we're going to see how God reveals Himself yet further in the life of Abraham. God desires to, instead of Abraham making his name great, like these people God just was displeased with, he says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I am going to make your name great, and I'm going to give you a son. Exciting things for Abraham. And these are all things initiated by God himself, further revealing his good plan, his good character, his love for us. So join us this upcoming Sunday. If you want to read ahead, read in Genesis at the end of chapter 11 and all of chapter 12. And that'll be a good starting point for us to open the word on Sunday morning at 1030.